that uh, any of you that are thinking of um, a 3D modeling program to download AtCam Standard from the internet because you can use it uh, fully uh, for 30 days free. Um, I think that's a very good idea um, because you know, if you find out you, you can't get on with it, uh, or uh, you don't like it, you prefer another program, then you know you haven't lost anything. Um, but uh, believe me, I strongly believe that it is the best program on the market today. Uh, within that CAM standard, um, it's vastly different to uh, the old App CAM Express. Um, it is more, I suppose, um, on a on a on a parallel then with um, the old AtCam Pro because you can actually construct your own 3D model in it. You have 3D modeling tools, uh, and I think it's probably the best value for money. And it's a very easy program to use. Um, so I'll show you. What we're actually going to do with this video is uh, I'm going to put together um, a, I suppose, uh, English Knight's Shield, um, which is going to be in 3D. Uh, and on the shield, we are going to place uh, smaller reliefs. And I'll show you how to resize those and how to place them uh, into our account. And it is very, very easy. Uh, and I do suggest you, as well, have a look at, um, well, most, I suppose, of the tutorials um, put out there by uh, AppCamp, because they're, they're very, very good. I believe uh, it's probably the best program. If you're running a CNC uh, router machine, or CNC mill for that matter, um, it's probably the best program out there. Um, I believe, anyway. Um, it, you know, it's got a CAD, it is a CAD CAM program, uh, and there's everything in there that you would probably ever need to uh, run a CNC machine. So um, we'll get on. So when you open at CAM, this is the opening screen then, uh, and if you wish to, you can go directly to the um, tutorials, uh, which tell you how to. Uh, Use AtCam standard, AtCam standard, by the way. Uh, so you'll see up in this top corner, it's at, um, Autodesk AtCam standard 2018. So this is the actual brand new one this month. Um, so what we'll do, we'll go into new model. Uh, incidentally, this, if you pressed on this one here, that would show you um, how to start uh, working within AtCam as indeed I'm going to do now. So you go to New Model, which brings this dialog box up. And really this, you're setting up your, your piece of work. Um, so what you, you need to do now, I think everybody's, or a lot of people now are using Windows 10 with a 64-bit, um, and they have probably a dual or quad uh, core, which is, um, quite fast enough so you when you're dealing with um, 3d reliefs you need a high resolution but be aware um, if you the higher res the resolution that you you use is going to slow your computer up a bit especially if it's an older computer uh, but 
if if you raise the resolution you get a far detailed um, relief when you when you cut it so this is what I normally do put it up to maximum because I've, I've got a fairly new and a fairly fast computer now at this point you can either um, elect to work in millimeters or inches um, I always work in in millimeters in metric um, it's the modern thing to do I suppose <laughs> um, so also at this point you can choose um, the size of your material uh, now in uh, in fact this is this is already set for what I what I need uh, 250 250 millimeters by 230 millimeters I'll just pick up the piece of work that we're going to be using yeah, so I've already set this this up this is the the piece that we're, we're actually going to be cut into it's a uh, nice piece of pine on the back and there's a nice piece of oak hardwood on the front. I've laminated it onto there. And we're not going to cut all this. A lot of this is going to be waste. Um, because I'm going to be holding this down on the table. Um, but so we're going to be coming just past. And just past this way. So hence uh, it's uh, 250 by 320. Which is just 10 millimeters bigger all around. Than this piece of oak. So it ensures we 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 machine the whole area. Also in this uh, opening screen, this is the point where we can change the origin of our program. So at the moment it's set in the middle, but we can choose any corner we wish. Now if it's a CNC milling machine, it's normally this back corner. But a CNC router is either this corner at the front here or the center. I like to use the center in this uh, situation. And I'll show you on the machine how to change a tool. And when this is machined away, how you can still find the, the, the Z. Uh, that's not a problem. So I like to use the, the center uh, as a start point. And we say OK. Okay, so there's our piece of work. Now, what we can do, get the cursor, we can go up here to Relief Clip Art Library. So we'll open that. Now, this is all the preset reliefs that is in ATCAM. There's over 600 of them, which will keep you busy for a long time. Um, and there's vastly more that you can download. Um, either in grayscale or as a relief for free a lot you have to pay for um, off the internet but like I say within this program you can make your own relief you can actually make one of these fairly easily when you get proficient but for a start you can start using the reliefs that are available within the program. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to, there's already a shield here that ATCAM has produced with smaller reliefs on it. But we want to put our own on, we want to design our own using the reliefs within ATCAM. So we're going to come down, there's many many reliefs, dragons and owls and what have you. Oh, here we go. There's a plain shield, so we're going to drag and drop that, place it into the middle of the material. And it is very, very big. So what we're going to do, we are going to alter the size by the dialog box up in this corner up here. And we're going to, we're going to keep, we're going to say lock it. In other words, Whatever dimension we're going to correct up there to suit our piece of work, we want all the other dimensions to come down with it uniformly to keep this, the model the same, uh, should we say, size and don't distort it. So what I'm going to do is get the height 
and we don't want to make it, I mean this is a full size man size shield <laughs> which we could cut on our machine if we wanted to but I just want to make a plaque to go on the wall so we're going to say we want that if I can remember the size of my material Two ninety-five. So we go two ninety-five, and now all of the other uh, ones have come down with it. So now I'm going to unlock it. Unlock. So now the Z is a little bit too high because our material that we're going to cut into is. 19 millimeters. Now I want to obviously that is they're saying it's 60, uh, 69 millimeters in Z. Well, it's too much for us for what we want to do. So I'm going to alter that now and I'm going to say I want to, that to be 14 millimeters. Um, scale in millimeters and we're going to say apply and there it is right so now, now what we have the right size of 3d relief uh, it's not placed into the center of our material so to do that is fairly easy we just come here to the origin position and we just go zero zero and apply and there it is right in the center of our material so now what we need to do is come down to this bottom corner down here now I'll zoom into this for you so you can see easier now down in this bottom corner here um, before we press paste uh, what we need to do is alter this we can uh, change this to several different methods of placing this into the material now we want to put this into the model so it's that would be cutting it down into the model. The one we want is to, this is uh, merge high. Let me see. There we go. Okay, so this is the one we require. Now, in later videos, I will describe to you. Uh, how these different methods uh, of placing a 3D model into uh, a piece of work, how they differ. And uh, so at the moment we just need this one here. Okay, so we say paste. And there is our shield. Now up in this top corner here, you'll see a little little box. Now this is the, the, the viewing uh, area I suppose. Now on several of these little windows you'll see there's a little triangle. Now if you hold the left key down it'll bring out a, f a flyer um, dialog. So you can click on that one and it will change it and you can see that we've placed it in and it is indeed a 3D model. It's standing out from the material. Okay, but it makes it easiest. E it makes it easier for us if you look at it square on, so you can see exactly where you are positioning our three D models. So now what we're going to do is we're going to choose several of the three um, D models or clip out out of the clip out library. Um, into our shield. 
So I think I think the first one for this top corner will we'll take a castle. As it's a knight's. So what we can do then, we don't necessarily have to change the figure work up there yet. Um, you can manually put this in until it it looks about right. It looks the right size. If you use the arrow keys on your your keyboard, as I am doing now, you can precisely position it. Um, a little bit bigger this way. Just a little. And that looks about right, I think. Maybe down a little bit more. There. Now I like that. Um, but now I want to alter the Z height. Because I want that to be... A, I want it to stand out more. Okay, so... Because at the moment it's saying it's going to be 2 millimeters Or thereabouts. That's only going to be slightly risen. I want some more detail in it. So I'm going to say I want 5 millimeter. So I'm going to now apply that. So it's applied and I want it in that position. And I'm going to come down here now and I want to merge high. In other words, I want to place it on top of this material. After this is machined, I want this to be machined on top of it. So that's why it's merge high. And place. And there it is. It's as simple as that. It's nearly as simple as drag and drop, but uh, obviously there is some things, some dialogue that you have to put in to tell the program how big you want it and exactly where you want it. Uh, so it's, as, it's really as easy as that. Now then, I think... Right, so let's choose something else. So we'll just go down through the dialog box. Go down through the clip. Out. Oh, here we go. It's a unicorn. So we'll put a unicorn up here. Drag and drop it. So we can... It needs to be sort of... Um, there we go. That's going to suit in there very nicely. And really it's as quick as this. Uh, so now we go up in this dialog box and say, OK, we want this one to be 5mm as well. We'll be fairly uniform about this. Apply. And again, merge high. Plus. Add it. And it's there. So it's a very simple process. I think we'll we'll choose a prancing horse because I like horses. I, I've got three. <laughs> I also like Ferraris. So we'll put a a horse in here. Let's make him fairly. Fairly big. I just want to allow enough space for the tool to come in between here and cut. So that's so now I can jiggle him about a bit now, moving very slightly by the take him over a bit. So what I'm actually doing is I'm just using the the arrow keys on my keyboard to position him exactly where I want him. And again, up here we change the Z height to five millimeters. If you if you took it to ten millimeters, it it distorts it a little bit. 
and apply and then come down here and paste it on top okay so we're adding it there it is and I think now we'll we'll choose something like a hawk oh there's a nice there's a falcon that'll do we'll put a falcon here so you can build up multiple 3D relief very quickly in Outcam. Outcam standard. Uh, I think it's probably a little too big. Yeah. And we will position him a little lower. There. Just to match up with that one and that one and again up here and five millimeter and apply and paste add notice add merge high paste and there it is so we now have a uh, multiple 3d relief our uh, shield with uh, um, emblems whatever you want to call them. Uh, so oh, now it's time so to uh, do some machining. So make some tool paths. Now to do tool paths within the new app cam, we need to come up to here because it's a 3D relief and click that. And it brings up uh, a dialog box. Uh, we have an option we have options here. We want to do the whole relief, which is what we want to do. Um, in fact, what I what I like to do uh, before this, we're go we're going to do a, an extra. So we'll close that, and we're going to come here. Now this is vector tools. Now I find it easier working with with that cam if you just pick a vector tool, and you come to the extremity of your your work and draw a box uh, I've got snap turned on as well and I don't want to fill in any of this because it, it, all this is uh, all right I don't want to m rounded corners or anything like that I will do that uh, I will show you how to really work with the the, the drawing tools or vector tools uh, in a later um, video so all we need to establish now is I've drawn a box and I am going I want to establish it or create it uh, which I've done there and you see it's in a pink uh, box around it uh, it'll become evident to you in just a moment so what I'm going to do now is open up the uh, the 3d machining strategy uh, now then if you notice this is this is pink okay that means it's highlighted so in here I can elect to machine the whole relief okay or just individual parts so I want to re I want to machine the whole relief in one go now I have now selected that box so everything inside that box will be machined so it, the, the tool will not go out machine outside of that box so that's why I've drawn that box there to give at cam an indication well that is as far as I want you to go um, so we're going to take a roughing option so we open this one up now all these tools and speed and feeds are made within at cam um, so you can use uh, so Outcam have already split this up into individual groups like for aluminium this is for aluminium roughing in actual fact aluminium roughing uh, it is about the same as hardwood roughing <laughs> so anyway I'm going to draw it down uh, steel wood 
here we go, wooden plastic. Um, and we're going to use a 6mm ball mill. Because you can, you can machine away a lot of material very quickly with the ball mill. Um, and we're going to select that one. Now, first of all, we are going to now reopen this and we are going to fill in this dialog box. Now, this is where you fill in the speed and feeds for your machine. Now, my machine, uh, this, is the, uh, this is Gwen, the one that I have completely rebuilt. Uh, and your standard machine from, if you buy it off eBay, won't be able to do this. Um, and I will tell you that the new machine that I'm having delivered at the end of the month will do it very much faster and very much more accurate even than, than my machine here. So, step over. We really want to get rid of a lot of material fairly quickly, but we, want it done. we don't want to rip it off in such a way that it uh, tears the material and, and, and we lose material up through uh, like from a, a splinter or something up through the where we need material to stay so we've got, still got to be careful so we're going to say we're going to have a, a one millimeter one point zero a one millimeter step over so in other words it's going to machine across this way step over one millimeter and machine back this way uh, step down six millimeter I normally do about five. Um, feed rate. Now, uh, my machine will feed a lot quicker than that. Uh, so we're going to say 60 millimeter per second. So it's millimeters per second. Okay, so that's, that's getting along. Um, plunge rate. Incidentally, the machine I'm uh, my machine that I've designed that I'm taking delivery of uh, end of the month I can put this all the way up to 100 millimeters a second just to give you an idea plunge rate um, 25 spindle speed now my spindle speed is not controlled by the computer but uh, we'll leave that as it is. And it's tool number one. Now this is the options of how we're going to machine this. It's called a raster operation. Angle. No, we want to leave it a zero angle just back and forth in the X. No. Cut in direction. Both. Now you can elect here to either just cut in one direction, then lift off, come up here and cut in one direction, okay, uh, or both directions. I want both. So we'll scroll down even further. Uh, this is the, the Z safe. Uh, in other words, where the, the, the tool will start at before it goes down into the material. Um, that's what material is going to be left. So it's just over half a mil to be left for the, um, the finishing tool to come in and remove. That's fine. So we're going to apply that. Now then. Safe Z home position that's fine as well. Safe Z. So now we're going to set up the actual material, and the actual material is eighteen point five. Eighteen point five model position top of the block. Material zero, top of the block. I like to keep it all at the top of the block. And this is the material that you're going to be left with at the bottom. So here's a, a lighter colour. 
and it's actually telling you there there's roughly about three millimeters going to be left which is fine so we're going to say apply so the next thing to do now is to name the toolpath so you have you 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 you, you know what it is uh, and what it relates to so we're going to say and I, I abbreviate everything so we're going to say um, so it's a roughing so it's a rough and it's a six millimeter and it's a that's a ball now so we're going to calculate now so the computer at the moment is doing millions of calculations and writing the g-code done so that's the roughing taken care of and it will actually uh, go over that material approximately three times so it's going to machine three times because it's going down five millimeter at a time actually it might even do four times so to verify that we can go into there oh, I don't know whether you can see that let's have a look there we go so now you can count how many times so it's one two three four times and you can see that it's left a, a little bit on the bottom for the finishing tool to come in so that's how you determine and you can see exactly whatever dial you filled into the dialogue whether it's actually going to happen and we can check and see well yes it is going to happen so we come back up here again to the 3d tool paths and we choose a finishing option so the difference between finishing and roughing obviously within the dialog box in here the speed and feeds are set up uh, differently so that's why there's, uh, uh, they're segregated then so we come back down through here wooden plastic and we're going to go three millimeter bald mill and we're going to select dialog box comes up again um, hole relief it's already still selected remember that box around the outside everything inside of that so here we go the step over is 0.3 of a millimeter we'll do 2.5 quite a very fine step over uh, step down three millimeter actually we'll do five because we want to make sure that it does it in one cut only feed rate 76 a little bit too much for for Gwen so we're going to go 60 because otherwise she might start losing steps no problem for the new machine uh, 25 actually we might be able to make that 30 uh, if I make it more than 30 um, it might start losing steps um, and for this I would probably go 22,000 RPM uh, this is number 2 tool number 2 uh, tolerance that's the tolerance uh, classic raster XY spiral classic raster is fine that means it just go back and forth back and forth back and forth like this um, so in this case we want to do it in one pass so you don't want it to do multiple passes we want it to do in one pass so this is a finishing so it's a fin abbreviate everything <laughs> I do and it's a three millimeter Ooh. 
three millimeter ball mill. This is going to take a fair bit of time in for this pretty fast computer. It's going to make literally hundreds of millions of calculations. Look, oh, calculator, sorry, calculate now. <laughs> So it's just going to turn this picture to red because the step over is uh, 0.25 of a millimeter. And the computer is literally going to make billions of calculations actually. There it is. So now we'll machine this in at cam in the simulator which is here. Um, standard simulation um, this is just giving you general information, uh, pixels and what have you. Uh, I normally leave it as um, as they have it here, so just say simulate all tool paths. And there you go. What you see on this picture within ArtCamp is exactly what is going to be represented in or with your machine. There it okay, is. Okay, so the next thing to do is to come here and save the toolpaths. So this one's already selected here. Uh, save it in F, I think we're in F. Okay, so you can save it in many different languages, uh, but for our purposes, G code millimeter and save. That's a relatively big file. We'll check to see whether it has gone in. There it is, there. So then, what you do is put that one over there. Take that one back, six millimeter ball. Six millimeter. In, save. That's done. There it is. There. Um, so it's as simple as that. So now, what you do is take this out. It's on the thumb drive, and now you put it into the computer that is running your machine. I hope uh, you've enjoyed uh, watching me put this together in the new App Camp standard. Um, so the next video will be uh, me machining this on uh, my CNC 6090. Um, if you've liked what you've seen, please uh, press like, uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, little red box down the bottom corner there, little red one. That will take you, take you to my YouTube channel where you can see tutorials on AppCam, um, CNC routers, wood turning, uh, different shop jobs I do around here, uh, making a bit of furniture. Um, I think there's something there for everybody. So uh, until next time, bye for now.